Let's talk some toys in here. <laughs> hey, how's everybody doing today at YouTube? This is the man child. All right, so today in my Masters Universe Revelations Series 2 reviews uh, that I'm continuing, we got Man at Arms. So if you're not familiar, Series 2 has Spike or Beastman, Man at Arms, and Teela. I already did reviews on Spike or Beastman. I thought they were both awesome figures. I'll bring him in. We'll compare him a little later. Uh, Spike or was the best. But they finally... Um, it's interesting that this man... So he gave us Man in Arms from the iconic Filmation look with his mustache. And sort of what he's supposed to look like going back to the Filmation cartoon. That's basically what the Netflix series is supposed to be doing. Picking up where the old Filmation cartoon left off. I say that in spoilers because the cartoon after episode one, there's like this big mashup and there's this whole time travel sequence and certain characters change. Beastman was one of them. Man in Arms was one of them. Uh, it was interesting to Beastman because we got the Beastman look with the Series 2 figure that was later instead of the, you know, the Filmation one. And I thought they would do the same with Man in Arms, but we got episode one Filmation style and I, I couldn't be happier. So let's bring them and check them out. Uh, packaging's great, super collector friendly. You, you know, and what I love with these boxes, you, you pop the top, pull the plastic bubble out. You can take the guy out, review him, display him, set him up, play with him, whatever you want to do. And then if you want to put him back in box, him in a car, put a little piece of tape, down, you know, on the top, bang, done. Right? There's the back. Pretty cool art. Has its own thing going. I'm bringing a bio here. If you want to read that, all right? And here's all the figures. The newer wave and uh, He-Man Skeletor, of course, which I already did reviews on. So uh, yeah, let's um, so let's get this guy to package and we're gonna check him out. All right, so um, yeah, it's real easy. I'm just showing you, but yeah, see how he's secured in the bubble? Uh, how easy is this to pop the hands and the figure out? Now they got these little ties. They're kind of annoying. You got to be careful when you cut them because it's easy to scrape the just the paint or the armor. So you got to be careful with that. If you want to put the figure back, obviously you're not gonna have those little ties anymore. I don't know if you can't see that. Um, just put some tape, some nice clear tape. Now we'll secure them in. Now, before I go any further, I just wanted to go over that with everybody because that's a, a concern with me. If you want to put the figure back in a box, but not car, but not. Let me do a little teaser. This is a uh, little uh, for my subscribers. It's people big in Mass Universe, especially with the Origins. So check this out. All right. Got Mosquito today. Man, I could not be happier to get this guy in. So... Yep, fresh from uh, eBay in the doorstep, and he's probably going to be the next figure I'm going to review before the Revelations Teela. So just stay tuned, because that's coming next in the next couple days. So I just want to share everybody who's, uh, you know, wound up with the Origins line like I am. All right, back to the Man in Arms, Revelations. All right, so got him out of that little package on our table here. Let me tell you something. First impressions, just sitting in the sky and looking at him. What a fantastic figure. I mean, you know, again, he when you see images of these guys early on, I see this stuff. I'm like, yeah, that looks terrible. It's almost like the head was too big or too small, or just they just look weird. I don't know what it is to, with the photography, with or the, how they're trying to promote some of this stuff. And when I get the stuff in hand, even like the He Man, I, I and I'm really, and I'm I'm trying to pick them apart. I mean, I love the classics. The classics is my number one heart and soul. Next is the Origins. I didn't think I'd get into this line. But as I get them in hand, they're they're awesome. They really are. I really like them a lot. And he looks so... He really translates well from the cartoon. A lot of these characters are now. The only one that really didn't, in my opinion, was He-Man. He, they, for the figure, I, I did like the figure in hand. I did a review on him, sort of many people. But I don't think he translated well. It's like they didn't make him buffed up enough from the... Um, what limited air time he had, of course, in the in, 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 right the new He Man car, Mass Universe cartoon, he just didn't translate well. But everybody else really did. And here's another guy, prime example. Yeah, just terrific. I couldn't be happier with this guy. And Man in Arms is just he's a, a iconic Motu character. You got to have. I mean, going back to the vintage days when I was a kid, and it's funny. I think I got Man in Arms a little later in life. Probably to, I don't remember forty years ago, right? It, Fifth or sixth figure I got, but it's just that in green colors, the helmet. Now, obviously, the toy one didn't have the mustache, but which would have been cool if it came with the head without one. But I don't mind this because you kind of put your mindset with the filmation cartoon. That's where it all started from. But it would have been cool if you got the head that didn't. But anyway, so let's bring him and check him out. Look at the head sculpt. 
just, yeah, great. The way the mustache is, the eyes, um, just the face, the helmet. Really nice job. Uh, all the armor, he has his, uh, let's focus in here. So, yeah, let's go to articulation where, we have the, where we're having close as far as the head. Yeah, I mean, look at that. All the way down. Eh, can't go back too much, but that's all right. I think it's more important for him to look side to side and down. So, you have good articulation in that sense. We we'll bring him out a little bit. He's just got his, yeah, really, that's that reminiscent armor. Good job. It's a really soft material. Good paint. Even has those furry ends up top. Uh, the classics and some of the originals did uh, did that. They didn't have to do that, but they did. So I'm liking that. Uh, has a typical, that uh, just that one piece that, you know, that's actually two piece, I'm sorry, that goes on the arm, up in the bicep, and the uh, the shin guard, the um, forearm guard there. And they're kind of, they don't connect. They never did, but they're you know, kind of loose. I never liked that with these. Classics, the vintage is the same way, but you know, when you pose it, it does this thing. You see how it flips off, it does the same, same thing. Um, no other detail. I don't see it would have been cool in this if he had the blaster gun, like the classics had, or in the, in the cartoon. You know, they don't have nothing like that, just kind of its own little metal mechanical piece, you know. So, I, I and I don't remember in the uh, cartoon in the uh, Revelation cartoon if they I don't think he used that. I think he had blasters and stuff, and that would have been cool if he did come with that, but. You know, what do you expect it, it, for what you're paying for these figures? They're only going to give you so many accessories. Um, and you can use classics accessories, 2000X, and you can put them right. You can use it with these guys that go great because I've done it. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's go to his articulation in the arm. So this one, obviously, uh, doesn't have armor in the side, but great articulation. Ball, okay. Bicep swivel. Go way out. Down to the side. Has that double... Um, Double elbow, double joint elbow, pinless joints. I absolutely love that. I've said this in all my videos. Um, another th some of the wonky things I think that throws people off with these figures. Aside their size a little bigger. Now, I'm, I'm referencing, referencing this to classics because they're not classics. They can work with your classics, but they're kind of their own thing a little bit. Bigger loincloth. They have longer legs. The smaller head. The posture is a little more forward. And the bicep's undercut. And they do that. Because of the pinless joints, which I like better, because I never liked them pins. So, and when the arms are turned in, it, it looks fine. Okay, I've gotten used to it anyway. Um, so yeah, I just want to go over that. Uh, has has the ab crunch even with the armored? Okay, so good ab crunch or torso crunch. Uh, waist same thing, turn side to side. All right, now even with this armored, it's going to slop all over the place, but you still have good articulation with it. Okay, uh, hands. I got the good the ball joints in both hands. I didn't do them yet. Um. He has, now he comes with six different hands total, and it's the same, seems like the same thing. They come with punching hands. I'll get into that in a minute, but let me just, all right, so let me finish up your articulation. But yeah, really good, good, um, good range of motion hands uh, as far as the ball, and they can spin and, okay, in and out. All right. So let me see, back to this. Now this... Yeah, there's no way to really adjust this piece. It just kind of slops all over. I it would have been cool if you can tighten the strap a little more, but it doesn't look like you can. Maybe it's got to go up more into the bicep. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I got to go. Okay, I see. Like that. There you go. That's what it is. All right. And um, and you'll have the limited range. Of, but what do you expect with the armor range of motion? Going down to the legs. Great. You know, splits. Why would you want to do a split with your figures? But hey, you know, you could do kicks. Man in arms to me is just the... Master weapons, martial arts. So you know you want to pose these guys. He's the type of character I visualize wanting to do all those different combative moves. You know, um, they also give you a split. I showed this all my characters in the uh, upper thigh. I don't know why you want that. It's kind of goofy, but you know, because once it's out, of, if you're posing in certain positions, it just doesn't look right. But they gave it to you. Um, we'll do the knees. Let's do this knee with the armor. So you also got that one typical one piece of armor goes on the one leg. All right. You still bring the leg all the way back, double joint, pinless joints, both legs. I think that's great. And even when you pose them in that, it doesn't look bad to cut. And these guys, uh, oh, and they have bigger boots too. That's another thing. Like just the fuzzier, loin, bigger fuzzier long cloth and boots. And um, so that can twist. And they have great, really good ball in the feet, okay? And left to right, up and down. So, and they both do that. Even this with the armored on. So I don't show this on my videos, but I'll do it again. Um, my, uh, so 
he's pretty tight. The joints in the sky. It's not, it's not standing too bad. Sometimes they get real loose, but yeah, real, really, really, I'm really happy with him so far. So let's get into his weapon. Has that iconic mace weapon man and almost is known for now. This one has his own style. Really, it's a lot bigger. Um, it's reminiscent of the original, I want to say, PowerCon uh, Man at Arms. That's and I actually have one to compare. Uh, Origins just did one, so we'll compare that in a little bit. But that's where this particular design's coming from, okay? Because the classic's a little bit different. So let's put that. So he, so the two hands he comes with going back to the hands. He, he comes with two of these um, right and left, the, you know, the, the semi-open hands or gripping hands, more open hands or karate chop hands or. That's what I call them. And then punching fists. So let's put this. Obviously, the closed hands would be for the weapons. Fits right in. Oh, by the way, this weapon's really nice. I like the texture in this. It's not that gummy plastic that's going to warp. You know, and I can't stand that with some of these newer toy lines today. Um, It's, yeah, it's paint's not bad. It's a good paint. It's a metallic color, but, oh, excuse me, the hand. Okay. Pretty heavy, too. It's funny how some of the accessories on these guys are... They got a little bit of weight to them. A lot of plastic there, you know? So let's put him in his iconic pose. See how he stands now. See how heavy that weapon is? Kind of throw him off balance a little bit. Put it back. There we go. All right. Focus him in. Let's check that out. Yeah, that's really... Yeah, it looks great. And I like the paint detail, even on... Because some of the guys have, to me, minimal paint detail, I guess. You know, you're, just for the cost, they got to cut down to... um make the uh figure cheaper but yeah a little metallic little highlights in here the armor it's two different colors you know even in the belt they have some it's like a lighter blue and they have some another overspray then the red these i don't know what these are jewels or different i don't know what these belts are about to be honest with you but um yeah just these all all these different designs and colors in the belt um obviously one color the green tone which is typical for man in arms the boots so it's got a lot of different the helmet, the mustache, has a lot of different colors going. Uh, the coupling on the side. So, you know, they didn't cheap out there. And he feels great, too. Now, mine, I don't know what that is. Oh, boy. I have something. What's that? Like a QC issue in the helmet down in there. I don't know what that is. Like a paint chip, maybe. But it ain't terrible. I, I don't know. I see it. I don't see it. I can get over that. All right, so that's uh, so we did the weapon, we did the articulation, I right, did the close up. Um, let's change out. I don't know, just we'll put a punch and fist in. So he comes with a couple different punches. So let's pop this hand out. So you got a pegs are not too bad on these figures, really easy. All right, one in, one out, real easy. Okay, that's the punch and fist, and there's two of them. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to do all. You get the point. How to change them out instead of boring everybody on camera, waste too much time on that. So we had a punch and fist. We already had the uh, one open hand he comes with, and we had to close the um, semi-closed weapon gripping fist. So I'm going to pop that back out. I like that original fist hand he comes with. Let's put that back in for now. All right, so we went all over that. Now, let's uh, let's do a little bit of comparisons here with uh, some of the classics and the other man-at-arms figures I have. All right, so we have a little comparison here. So here we have a classics. Now this particular man at arms came with the battle ram, um, the box, the uh, deluxe box battle ram for classics. I bring him in. Now I do have the original one. I, most of my classics are mint on card, and I have him somewhere up on a shelf. I'm not even because oh, the only difference is he has the helmet without the mustache, and the heads really don't work. That's the problem with these. But I just wanted to bring in this guy for comparison with the heights, the different detail. Now, another reason why I'm glad I had this guy to package is because in the show, if you're not familiar or familiar, you notice this is kind of almost as far as the head, what man and arms look like later in the time travel or when the show went 10 years into the future, something like that. He had a tie back, hair in a bun, had no helmet on, still had the mustache, I believe. He might even had a little bit of facial hair, which just figured on, but it's kind of funny that there is a, I had to figure that, and that's that's what he becomes later. Now, it's, like I said, as far as the head, so let me give him a spin around before I jump ahead. Kind of can send it back if you're curious. If you're not curious, the classics, these guys have a lot more detail in weapons. And again, if you have these, you can use the weapons in his hand, vice versa. But they really work together well. 
And I think too with this line, He Man and Skeleton, uh, He Man especially was it seemed extra tall to me. I don't. He, I got him over in a, he's over in the corner here, but he just seemed bigger. He seemed to stand above all the other characters, but not bulkier. That's what I think what people want, especially myself. But it seems like to me now Wave Two is really in scale with the classics almost, and aesthetically they're kind of identical. The, the muscle tones a little different, but they they work well. And you could take the armor off of him and probably. These bucks are bigger. I'm not sure, but to take, I don't know if I'm going to get into all that. I don't know if it's important, but um, let's. So the head. So for instance, let's just. I'll show you for a second. So the heads on the revelations pop off very easy. Okay, so I'm going to put them off the side so we don't fall. Now, yeah. See, mine has yeah. See, some kind of QC issue in there. I don't know what that is, but anyway, the classic head is a little more difficult. Now. I have a blow dryer. I'm going to have to heat this. So let me pop this guy off. And I'm going to show you a head swap. And we'll check that out. Okay. This is kind of interesting. So this is our um, revelations. I left the armor on, obviously. This is the classics. I stripped all that armor everything off. Because once I start playing around, now we're in a can of worms. You know how to... <laughs> so we'll try an armor swap out, too. I didn't want to get involved in that. But I, mean, I am now. Um, so now here's the problem. So this is Classics Body Revelation Head. It can work. You can get it under a peg, but it's very sloppy. All right? It kind of bounces all around. It's just sitting there. But for the most part, you could make it work. And on the Revelation's body, and the head too, falls off. It doesn't, they're not exact. They're kind of really a little bit, you got to push this head on. It's a little tight, but you can heat it up. I had to actually heat it to get it off the, what a blow dryer. Oh my God. But... It does work. And now you got the man at arms. It doesn't articulate too well. Okay. Somewhat. But now you got the man at arms somewhat from the show later on with that head. If you had the battle ram or somebody selling them, sometimes you'll see these on eBay or custom heads. So that's pretty cool. That you can kind of somewhat do that. It's not perfect, but it does work. Now let's play around with the uh, armor on these two. All right, so I got the Revelations armored on the classic, and I put his head back on. So this is the classic Buck or classic Battle Ram Man at Arms. And, and this one's slightly different. You can see the boots here. It has matching different type of boots to where it would have that, like Man at Arms and package, similar to the Revelations, have the whole setup. This guy doesn't have that same way. But it's basically the same figure overall. It's different head and that, what I just explained. But yeah, it works. Works really good. Curious about that. All right, let's try the Classics one, his armored, on the Revelations book. All right, so I got him set up. So I don't know if I'm confusing anybody here because I'm confused. Parts all over the place. <laughs> the, so we have the Revelations body, right, the buck. Um, left the arm, the the uh, shin guard on. It, the Revelation, the, his head, man arm's head coming to Revelation. We have the Classics now body armor on, which it fits great. I took this side of the armor off. I gave him a laser gun from the classics that comes with this guy. And I also changed out the, the um, all the arm gear, this armor that comes with the classics onto the Revelation body. And see, this one now has that laser blaster thing I told you about. You always see in the... has like a freeze ray or something came out of the filmation. All right. And then you could see him from behind. It's cool because now what was cool with this... If you had this figure, this armor, there's all these different weapons he's retrofitted with. And it can work for this character. Laser gun, he's got the typical mace. A little smaller and then this other type of... That other common mace you see with the Motu line. So that's really awesome. It, it For the most part, all the important stuff really fritch, uh, retro, retro, <coughs> excuse me, fits well. And heads do work, but they're a little weird. You, you want, I already explained that. And I, I've showed another video. So that's awesome. Really awesome. All right, so let me get everything back to uh, back to the Revelations guy, and we'll move on. All right, so we got them all back together for the most part. I had to put one of my infamous figure stands on him, because this guy, is, he's having a hard time balancing with, I don't know what it is, it's the weapon, or just the way I'm posing him. I'm messing around with him too much. Um, that was that was great, though, the interchangeability with, between the Classics and that man in armor. That's really cool and important. Um, so to finish out the video, let's do some other comparisons for a little bit of fun, a little bit of nostalgia. All right, so just for a little comparisons, we got some of our origins. Um, I'm real bit, a lot of us are real big into these guys. Um, obviously, a total different look, but it's funny with the origins where you got this 
your typical vintage style character, but he come with the mustache like the uh, vintage cartoon. Now, there is, I think Big Bad Toy Store does have like a Palace Guards pack, and they gave a spare head and spare armor and all that stuff, weapons, I think. It doesn't have the mustache. And I I think I prefer that one better just for nostalgia as far as the figure. But when it comes to the cartoon nostalgia, I like the mustache. So it's great we have both versions. Um, And then this one was the PowerCon version. Now, this is how Man in Arms should have been when the toy in the 80s originally come out. This is the, the real, the early, <coughs> excuse me, concept art. And we got the other guy with the, with the head and then the mustache later. So this was, uh, and it, it, you know, it's just funny how they all, just how they all mix together and, I don't know, just different variations, but it's still man at arms. So that's pretty fun. So that's those guys together. All right, like most of my classics, like I said, I have most of the stuff in a car. Now this is the Attorney to Palace Guard set. Um, I kind of wanted to bring these in just for a face-to-face -face comparison. Now I could have taken these out of box. I already, I'm thankful I had a man at arms. I was able, I had out, and we were able to swap some parts. But I want to show this because these guys come with different heads, weapons, armored, and just. From what I've seen with this guy, if you wanted to get one of these, it seems to me most of the stuff is going to be interchangeable. I already tried it. It works. So that's great. You know, there's no sense doing it on. But yeah, that's kind of those together just for, um, and if you're not familiar, these do exist with the Origins. And there's so many possibilities now between these and the Revelations of uh, Man at Arms. All right. So that's kind of those together. All right. And this is just the uh, last Man at Arms comparison. Now, this one is the, um, I haven't been in court, of course. The 2000 X Men in Arms. This was a variant where the armor changed and when they fought the Snake Men. I bring them in because this line, and I've said this in some other videos, really kind of reminds me more of the 2000 X, that American anime style, the exact different muscle aesthetics look a little different than the classics, which classics are more realistic to me. Um, the armor, the way they're hunched, the head's a little smaller, exaggerated loincloth, and you know, if you look at him, it's kind of reminds me of, but I, this is with this man in arms. He really, just from what I've seen, he's really in line more with the classics. Still has the Revelations look that, and what I just described with the 2000X, that going for that style. But he he's, uh, all the characters I did and Spike or really seem to feel more classics wise to me a little bit but of course with the revelation style so that's that's great i think that's really i'm liking that a lot all right um so let's do one more thing and uh we'll finish up all right and to finish up I'm just bringing in a little uh final finale of the, the um all the figures i did reviews on so far with the wave two and we have teal next uh, i'll probably gonna do that mosquito figure but teal is the final one and then after the, the um <clears throat> end of the Review, I'll throw teal and put them all four together. So that's the three I did. It's all these guys together. So yeah, I think I'm I'm really liking these guys. I'm really happy what they did. Even Beast Man, if you watch that video, it's kind of weird, but he's different, you know, different in the classics. And um, some of the stuff doesn't exactly fit. I wish it did like the man in arms. You can retrofit it, but you know, now you're cutting your sculpt, you're dremeling. I yeah, it, it's possible. The spike war is really great. Um, I love him. I, Again, classics is always my favorite, but he's if you didn't, if you couldn't get your hands on a classics, he's yeah he takes the cake. So yeah, it's so all guys together. I I thought I think he's great, great figure. You're gonna collect this stuff, man. Go for that man in arms. You gotta have him. He's one of the uh, Spike Wars the best in my opinion, but the man in arms is just how he just I don't know merges with the classics a little different. I really like that and the height. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope everybody's doing great. I hope that answers all your questions. And until next time, take care.